Yeah, this is the thing that I, I really, I was hoping there's some of it, I, I want to see more of it in the Bitcoin space, but there's still this people are still in that my team versus your team thing. And they just, if you're, if you're true, a true Bitcoin maximalist, then you are, a, you are for decentralized everything, right? If you truly believe that, and I've had this conversation with Bitcoiners, I'm like, if you're true, then you should be, why are you cheering for Trump or RFK? They're, they're not decentralized people. They're not, they're in a, the most centralized, <laughs> corrupt fiat federal reserve government ever. And so you should be for decentral. You, you, you're all about decentralization, but then you, you cheer for somebody who, because you're still in that. I think people just still can't get past that. My team versus your team thing. They just can't. And so, and, and, and to be totally fair here, I mean, you know, it happens on all sides. I, I mean, right. my, my, my buddy Joe, and I hope he doesn't mind me name checking him, but my buddy Joe, who uh, does work in the crypto space and is also a pretty big lefty, he brought this up. And, and I'm sure you would have really been feeling like, oh man, th th this hits me in my soul. He was saying, look, I feel like the left, generally speaking, really missed. The, the purpose of decentralization. They just missed it. They missed the opportunity. And it was just from such an evangelical, everything is either 100% or 0%. You're either here or you're there. There's no, no nuance, no context, no analysis. You know, e even with the whole, look, I get why there are some competing things going on in something like MMT and Bitcoin. Sure. I, I get that. There's definitely some competing ideas there. But... When you really look at it big picture, there's actually a lot of things they can all learn from each other. And there's a lot of kind of overlap because at the end of the day, it's both both of them take on just the concept of what we know as money. Now, they go two different directions with it. Sure. But some of those concepts, there's some room for overlap there. I'll give you an example. You know, uh, Bitcoin. The whole thing with surveillance in Bitcoin, where does all of the money go? It's not about like like that bill where they're like, we're trying to get people uh, evading their taxes. Well, we know that you tax, you're, you're more likely to go after someone making $20,000 a year than someone who's actually right. an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos. Why is that? Well, because really at the end of the day, our whole system is just about keeping a policy in line because we know that they just kind of print the money. That's why we always have money for war. And what happens is some of that money circles into defense contractors and to Wall Street and stuff like that. It doesn't go anywhere else. So it goes to the people who don't mind spending 200 bucks a night on dinner. So then we get massive inflation. When you couple all of our war spending with the massive upward transfer of wealth that was the pandemic, that's how you get inflation that is about 15 years worth in the next couple years. Those are all borrowed from MMT. Those are all MMT theories. However, those theories feed into why you should not be demonizing Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, this is this is the problem with America, especially with the, the tribalism and the my team, your team thing. Lefties, you know, conservatives aren't very creative because they just don't, they're not good with create, their brains just aren't really good. That's why there's not a lot of really brilliant out of the box thinking, creative musicians, artists, actors that are conservative. Have what you heard the new kid rock album? <laughs> it slaps. Um, and also though, lefties are bad with money. Lefties don't understand money. Lefties think all money is bad. They don't understand. And I used to be this way. Money is a tool. They don't understand. They think so billionaires are bad. Billionaires are ruining planet. So that means money is bad. And then there's this, this comes with this, this culture, this nobility of I'm a starving activist. I'm a starving artist when, and I've been advocating this since I've been in, in the Bitcoin space. If lefties had real money, Look, protesting in the streets and getting signatures and stuff, that's a fact that can be that can be effective. Boycotts are effective because they affect the bottom line, the money of the of the of the people in power. If I, I and I interviewed Jill Stein last year and I said, Jill, if, if you if you 
if the Green Party owned a bunch of Bitcoin and bought, let's say it bought it a year and a half ago when it was 20,000 a coin and now it's at 68, 69,000 or whatever, what if the Green Party had 100, 200 million dollars in assets? They would have a lot of money. What if the Democratic Socialists of America had real, had a hunt to, uh, half a billion dollars? What if, you know, what if any of these environmental organizations and lefties don't understand money? So they just, when, when, crypto and Bitcoin came around, they just went, ah, I don't get it. You and I saw this on a, on a smaller level with Rockfin. We were introduced to Rockfin early on. That was my introduction into crypto. And we tried to get all of our lefty friends to go over to Rockfin to make this like, it's decentralized. They don't censor us. They, they pay us in their own cryptocurrency. It's on the blockchain. And lefties were like, huh, I don't get it. And now Rockfin is like a QAnon channel, right. you know, with me, you and Lee you know, yeah. And, and, we and, yeah, it's like status quo, you, me, Lee, that's about it. And yeah, yeah, that was a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, uh, because lefties don't understand money and they should understand money because if they really understood how money works, how M what MMT is, what the money printing, what the Federal Reserve, what the central banks do and how decentralized money, Bitcoin can actually empower us as lefties. I mean, I had a great interview with Max Kaiser when I was in El Salvador. He was trying to get Greenpeace to pull its money out of the bank of, of one of the, they had all these euros in the, I forget which bank, one of these big European banks that was funding oil. And they're like, you guys. And he goes, he was trying to tell them to, to get their money out of there. And he goes, you'll, you'll, you'll hit the oil company in the, harder than any of your protests will because you'll take money out of a bank that funds oil rigs and, and pipelines. And they were like, oh, we don't want to do that. And he, Max Kaiser tried to tell, he taught in 2013 or 2014, he tried to talk to the Palestinians into buying Bitcoin to get off of the Israeli shekel. Cause one of the ways Israel keeps Palestinians down is financially. They didn't want to do it. Like, so, so people don't understand it. And, and I wish that they would. If lefties really understood and studied this, I get pushed back all the time on this show. A lot of my audience is like, Graham, stop pushing Bitcoin. I'm like, then don't buy it. I don't know why you're arguing with me. Don't buy it. I'm not forcing you to buy it. So it's really, um, it's a missed opportunity. That's It's not too late. Lefties should be investing in this stuff, but they're not. So.